I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources and welcome to this video. I'm going to be talking about all things texture tonight and the four things you need to master what is texture in the concepts of music. And texture is one of those weird ones. So it's not only, um, it's not just texture, it can be called all sorts of different things. And um, I'll get through more with that in a moment. So, but there's only four things you need to worry about with texture. Texture is usually not a question or something they normally put on their own. It's usually something, it's usually paired with some another concept. Um, it's very rare that they actually do a straight texture question, but it has been done before. All right, so I'm going to share screen and get all these little bits and pieces going and go there and go, come on. Alrighty, so as I said, we're talking all things texture tonight, and this is the four-step method to mastering texture in music. So welcome, firstly, and I'll talk about the six concepts of music and what they are. I'll give a very brief explanation of what's the six concepts of music, and I'll also think about, um, talk, talk about, oh, I should say four things, four, I can't count, four things that we need to talk about in texture. So there's six concepts of music. My brain's fried, I'm sorry. It's been a busy couple of weeks, <laughs> crazy. Anyway, in alphabetical order, we have duration, dynamics and expressive techniques, pitch, structure, texture, which is what we're referring to tonight, and tone color. So duration simply refers to how long or short a sound is, how long or short it is, okay? Dynamics and expressive techniques. Now dynamics, I'm gonna be talking about this um, in the next couple of days. I'll be doing that one. But um, dynamics refers to the volume of the music and expressive techniques refers to the actual um, way a sound is produced and the techniques used to produce a sound on an instrument and how that could be, um, it usually is changing when they're talking about those sorts of things in a piece of music that you need to listen, that you're listening to and analyzing. It usually doesn't stay the same. It's not like the guitar strums all the way through. It just doesn't do that. Um, pitch refers to how high or low a pitched note is. Now for me, pitch, is encompasses three uh, um, of the elements of music elements being melody tonality and harmony those three things come under pitch structure or mus musical form is the order and arrangement of the parts of a piece of music texture is what we're talking about tonight and it is how thick or thin um a sp or sparse or dense the layers of sound are in a piece of music and also tone color is the instruments used in a piece of music so it can also be called performing media so um or timbre. Timbre is referring to the actual sound quality, um, what it actually uniquely sounds like, but tone colour encompasses all those things. So they're the six concepts of music. So texture simply means, and it's quite complicated, but the relationship between the layers of sound or lines or voices can be described as thin, medium or thick in texture or density, depending on the number of layers. So if you look over here, now we can't tell by this picture how many layers there are because of this reason. Those three voices could be singing the one melody together. They could be singing unison. The two violins could be singing or not singing, performing the same part. So again, they could be performing their part in unison. It might be different to what the vocals are doing. Okay, so it's maybe only two, two layers. Whereas the double bass there, often it's probably going to be playing the actual, um, what do you call it, the, the, the bass line. Pretty safe bet. But the density could be very much changed if, for example, you have all three voices singing in harmony. So maybe the lead vocal is by the young lady in the front um, and the, the two male vocalists are singing harmonies, okay? The violins could be doing two different parts. So we're now up to four different parts and the double bass, another one. So now you've got five layers as opposed to maybe three. So texture and the, the density will always depend on what, not only the number of instruments playing, but what those instruments are actually doing. Layers of sound, it's the same thing. The relationship between the layers of sound or lines or voices. So here again, we've got a quartet, okay? We've got um, a, a clarinet, an oboe, a nice little woodwind um, quartet, a bassoon and a contra bassoon. Those instruments there, okay, um, again, we don't know what's playing the melody. We don't know if the bassoon and the um, contra bassoon are maybe doing similar motion or doing parallel motion where they're actually, you know, 
an octave apart we don't know okay just by looking at it but they're the sorts of things that come into texture and the layers of sound so don't forget if you want a freebie about all the things I'm showing you tonight, you can go to this site, juliajulia.teachable.com. And look, honestly, you're going to find it there. You just have to go and it says the, the, um, the com master the concepts of music. Okay, that's what it's there. So just go grab that and you'll get that document there that's actually there. And there's going to be another one there very soon. Okay, but it won't be there forever. So if you're watching this much later, you might find that this that document that I'm talking about might be gone, okay, in the challenge. Um, it might be gone because I'm going to only have that open a couple of year, times a year, but this particular um, document will be there all the time. So texture. So again, like I have been showing you, this is it printed in A4 because that fits nicely on the screen and it's dip D. Okay, they're the four things you need to remember. But that poster, you can choose to print it A3. Now this is A4, you might wanna print it twice the size and it looks great on the wall. It's a perfect size for a poster in the classroom. You might wanna print it A5, which is this size. And you might wanna print it black and white too, you don't have to do it color. Okay, but that's the, that size. And it's a really good size for going in an exercise book, uh, a student book, okay? Fantastic for reminding kids what they need to remember when they're doing a texture question. Or you might want to go, but wait, there's more. So I just feel like Goldilocks here. We've got big, medium and little. Okay, this little one here, you can see there already, that is also this. Okay, which I have printed and I'll talk about that in a moment. I love these. I use these all the time. They're my favorite thing. But I've literally just printed it. What is here? Small. Okay, that's all I've done. Okay, so that's the poster. Now it's, again, um, I talked about this in another video that sometimes um, students or um, they prefer to look at things in a different way. This might grab someone's attention and may make more sense to them to do it this way. It may make, make more sense to them to actually use the mind map, which I will show you now. Okay, so the mind map, again, this is it A4 size and this is it in the little one so there's the texture on that side and here's the mind map on the other okay so again it's just to remind the students what they got to do but this thing is so useful i'm using this to death at the moment with my kids i think they're getting a bit sick of it but again printed a3 and you can use it as a poster especially if you get the kids to color it in and um, add details to it um, you can print it a5 as i said and that's perfect size for the book or you can also put it use it for individual work or as part of a group work so i've been using these both group and individual for a couple of different things which i'm hoping is on the next slide it is okay so my senior students for them at the moment, for example, they've just literally handed this in today. I haven't even marked it, but you can see here. So this, this is the question they had to do. And this one's got performing media and texture. So they're actually using that. Now, I was hoping they were going to put more details around that, but that's okay because they also then had to plan their response here. And then they had to write their response. Okay, so you can see there's lots of information there, okay, which is what I was hoping them to do. Um, but I've also been using that, oh, that should say texture, sorry. I am I really don't know what I'm doing here at the moment. I'm so sorry. But texture, um, it should, it, you can use it as a listening planning map, as a performance planning map, or as a composition planning map, okay? Um, I've been using it for composition a lot lately and also for listening. So if, again, if you print it at this size, in the middle of an A3 piece of paper, okay, if I, it just doesn't fit. If I'm trying to hold it up, it doesn't fit in the camera, but it, it just gives that little bit extra room and it's perfect for doing group, group work when you're in the classroom, perfect for group work, okay? So this is, um, this particular one is not in the free resource, okay? Um, it is available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store under the Concepts of Music Mind Maps, um, and you can get it like this, and, and I'll give you a few, quite a few different versions. So you can have a coloured one, um, there's the black and white one, there's ones with, uh, like, I don't know, I think I've given you six different, six different, um, oh, that's seven. Oh, jeez, my brain. Six different things, <laughs> I'm not. I don't know what I'm doing with my brain today. I'm so sorry. Um, but that's this one is actually, I said, not available. This is not in the free resource. This is available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. But the thing is, you can also find this on my website, as in juliajulia.com, in the um, actual blog post, which is 
all about texture, okay? And it gives a lot of information. And a lot of the information I'm talking about tonight is also on in that blog post. So the thing I like about this, and this is why I've done it, and, and that's why I was talking about the fact that um, this is really good for kids in different ways, is that depending on the student, they may prefer this, they may prefer that, or they may prefer that, okay? They're the same information, same information, just presented in two different ways. And um, for the different learners, that will help, okay? So, but the things that we've got to be talking about is describe the density, identify what instruments are playing in what section, okay? The phony, which I'll go into a bit more. Um, phony is a phony word. I use that all the time. And D for diagram, which we talked about diagram in structure as well. So it's the same sort of thing because it's showing the layers and what's happening, all that sort of stuff. So density. Now, this is one of those things that kids get, um, it's quite hard in a way to talk about because sometimes, as we know, the music might sound really dense and heavy, but there may only be still four instruments playing. So it's not actually very dense. It may sound dense, but it's not necessarily very dense in how it's actually been um, the actual instruments, especially when we're talking about rock and especially when the guitar has been using a distortion of some sort, okay? But texture and music can be described using several terms, but the simplest ones are in describing the density of the music. The density or the texture of the music in an excerpt with only a few instruments playing could be described as light, thin, or even sparse, depending on if there's a lot of room there, okay? The density of a large group of instruments playing could be heavy, dense, thick, or even compact, okay? Especially if the layers are really close. So compact in terms of if you've got um, a vocalist, so it may be three, female vocals and if they're singing close harmonies that's a compact te texture because the layers the lines aren't very they're not spread out okay between like a treble and a bass register that sort of thing um the texture could will would depend on the number of instruments playing at any given time as well as how those instruments are being performed and what they're actually performing that's the other thing as well what are they actually performing Alrighty. so um if they're all performing the melody together well then it's really not a very thick texture even if it's 10 instruments doing it but if there's 10 instruments, 10, okay, and they're all doing something different, then the texture could be quite chaotic in some ways, depending on how it's written and how they're being performed. Identify is quite simple. Listen to the music and identify and list the instruments that you can hear. As simple as that, because section one might only have these number of instruments, section two might have this many, section three might have this many, section four might have this many, depends on what's happening in each each section okay so and that will then determine how thick or how dense the actual texture is and it will also determine um all sorts of things there might the roles might be changing it might be changing all sorts of other things but so that's why it's really important to identify what instruments are performing in each section now phony oh hang on hang on i'll get out of that because that i forgot to get rid of that that is a um <laughs> <laughs> that's actually oh a recording hang on sorry that was my mistake I forgot to get rid of that recording off there and I will go back to phony all right and slideshow sorry about that um where am I here we go oh my goodness I am really not with it today I'm apologizing it's been an interesting week and I'll go from current slide and I'll just keep going. So sorry, this is live. This is real. This is how it is. This is what happens in a classroom. Okay, so I'll go back. We talked about identifying. Okay, so I said phony. It's a phony word. It's a phony word, but it refers to phonic. Now, I remember this when the phones and mobile phones first come out and those little bricks, they used to talk about having polyphonic ringtones. It was such a misuse of the term because <laughs> they were not polyphonic in any way, shape or form. Yes, they had lots of different tones happening at once, but it was not a strict use of polyphonic. OK, so it used to bug me, uh, but I used to talk about that with the kids I said, many years ago, showing my age here. So please note that phony is not a real word. It is just a term used to help group the different definitions used to describe the type of texture in a piece of music. Below is a list of music terms and definitions for texture. So these are the sorts of words, and you can see it's got phonic, 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 phonic. And I said just phony, so monophonic or mon monophony. It's hard to say. Homophony, oh, I can't even say it. I'm not even going to try. Monophonic, 
single unaccompanied melody line. If it was everybody singing, um, if I use the song, say, Frere Jaca, because that could be done in a round, but everybody's singing it all at once. That means it's monophonic. If we're all singing in unison, no other accompaniment, that's monophonic. Right. Say we're singing the same melody. We're singing Frere Jaca, but this time we're adding a guitar. It would now be melody with a com accompaniment, which is homophonic, which is most of the music people listen to is homophonic. Polyphonic. Now, if we decided to do a round so that we had two groups and one started and then another one started a little bit after that, now we're talking about two melodies happening at once, okay? And that is polyphonic. So more than one melody happening at the same time. Now, heterophonic is quite difficult, but it is used a lot in pop. It really is, especially if they've got backing singers singing the melody and then the main singers singing something fancy over the top. So heterophonic is two melodies that follow each other, but with more ornamentation in the main melody. And that's what I'm talking about in pop music, especially um, that they there may be um, a, like a chorus section that the backing singers are actually singing the melody and the um, the main or lead vocalist is singing parts of the melody with them and then does all this other fancy stuff and then comes back to the melody and then comes back like that's that's that heterophonic type thing but it's very hard to hear and it's not easy to actually identify but it is a type of phony Diagram. So a texture diagram lists the instruments heard in the excerpt and just shows their entry and exit. Now, this is a perfect one, as that I talked about this with structure, and this is perfect for structure as well as for texture because it identifies what instruments are playing, what instruments are in the excerpt, what sections they're playing in, and how, and it can actually show how dense the actual texture is. So if you look here, that if you're looking at this representation in the chorus, that's when it's the most dense because all the instruments are playing, okay? So the only thing going all the way through is the drums, the bass and the lead electric guitar. And you can see that the dotted line there, that the lead guitar, this is just a made up song, but in this one, the lead guitar might be playing a little bit of a riff, a little bit more of a riff. And, you know, there's a little gap in between. The rhythm and acoustic guitar is playing all the way through. Again, probably just strumming. Okay, backing vocals are only coming in on the chorus. And the lead female vocals um, start. The male vocals come after. They both sing in the same, in the next section. And again, they repeat that idea. So that's what that actual texture and that little diagram is showing there is the ways that texture is. Now, you could talk about then what's actually happening. I mean, I don't know. We're not talking about... Um, you know, I don't know if they're singing harmonies in the chorus, or if they're singing in unison. There are other things that affect the layers of sound and affect the texture. So that's what we're talking about there. And again, we don't know with the with the backing vocals if they're singing harmonies or if they're singing in unison. Don't know. Um, but it gives you an idea of what's actually playing when and what's performing when. Okay, so that's, um, as said, what we're talking about here. And that's why a diagram is really important because you can actually then refer to in your response, talk about the density and how, how thick it actually is. Thick or dense it sounds. It might be that it sounds really light in the first verse and the second verse might be a bit heavier, maybe because the instruments are playing something different. Or maybe they're doing a different sort of technique. Again, all those things come into it. So just to remind you, we've got the two different things here. We've got the poster, which is in the free resource. And that particular um, uh, mind map there is not in the free resource. It is as a um, looking like this, a blank one that you can use. Okay, but it, it's not colored. All right, but you can get that in on my, in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store. So don't forget, in that resource is what you can see here, plus more. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff stuff in this freebie. So these are all the posters that you can use and you can see I've got them printed um, big and I've got them printed small there. And what you can see there, that small one is um, this, this little thingy, okay, which is that same tone color there, but texture is right there. Okay, that's it there. Um, and some other things and you can use them, like you get the concepts um, posters and you also get the mind maps in the freebie. And don't forget, you can see here again, all those different things, which I was just literally showing you here. All right, all the different sizes. Sorry, I'm losing stuff here now. Um, but that's the different, if you just, you can get so much use out of it just by printing them at different sizes and using them for different things. So if you'd like to get yourself a free copy of what I've been showing you tonight so that you can start mastering um, texture, go to juliagia.teachable.com. And I said, master the concepts of music. It is on the front, on the page, the first page. Okay, so when you go to that site, your juliagia.teachable.com, you will find 
that particular concepts of music thing there. It's right there on the page. Just go in, it's free. You just put in your details and you get instant access and it'll be there for as long as I choose it to be, which is probably gonna be a while. And you can find stacks of classroom resources ready for you to use over in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store. And you can use the link in the description below if, um, if you're looking at this on YouTube. Um, or if you simply just go to Teachers Pay Teachers and go to your teaching resources in the search, you'll find um, my store. And I've got like 600 something products in there. There's a lot. You should be able to find something you like. And again, if you'd like to find more information on texture, which again is totally free, it's on my blog, juliajulia.com, okay? And if you just go to juliajulia.com, if you go to the first page, you'll see a thing that says elements of music, click on that and that will take you to, it's like a little bit of a directory and it'll take you to all of the elements of music. Remember texture is in both the elements and the concepts of music. It's the same thing in both of them. We just, you know, different umbrellas for different things. Okay, so I'm going to, stop share and say thank you for watching these um as i said we're talking texture tonight and the four things that you need to remember texture describe the density identify the instruments that are playing tell us what type of phony it is but remember phony is a phony word and diagram okay so that's the diagram draw a diagram all right so that's yes yeah, said the a4 size being printed there on colored paper I have these laminated in my classroom because it, they will last longer, but it, the glare when I'm using it on the camera, it's um, not good. So that's why it's actually printed and it's just on paper. Okay. But again, you can print it different sizes and use it for different ways. So I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to say goodbye. Bye.